Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Lutheran. Good to see everyone here today. Um, good to have good weather, nice cool weather to bring us into worship today. Um, thank you for masking today. We, uh, we know that we're kind of in a uh, pretty sharp curve upward in cases in our uh, county, in our community, and so thank you for, for doing that. We know it's not uh, ideal, but it's not that hard either, and we can try to protect each other and, and uh, have a safe worship experience. Um, today we will have fellowship in the fellowship hall downstairs, and um, you, you obviously if you're drinking coffee, you don't have to mask, so um, uh, you can, you, we welcome you to fellowship following worship downstairs in the fellowship hall. Next Sunday, we are worshiping out at Carol Johnson's, and um, Carol lives on the road going out to Cyrus, okay, Highway 28, but you don't go all the way to Cyrus. You go about two or three miles. We will have a sign there that will show where to turn, and then it's two miles um, to the right. You go right, and then you go two miles, and her place is on the left, but it's about exactly two miles on that gravel road. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's an exciting uh, opportunity for us to worship outside and to enjoy fellowship. We're going to have a picnic lunch served for free and uh, apple cider pressing and uh, wine demonstration, a wine making demonstration, and so on. So uh, bring a long chair along because you'll need that as well. Also today, we have olive wood carvings available in the basement. And uh, there's a wide variety of these carvings. They make great Christmas gifts or confirmation. Um, we have confirmation coming up in October. Uh, birthday gifts, many other things. But take a look at those. They are carved in Bethlehem by 46 different carving families. So uh, it's a way of supporting Palestinian Christians to stay in their homeland and uh, to have a source of livelihood. So uh, it's, a, it's a good thing not only... Uh, supporting an art like that or a craft, but also to help people, um, to help themselves. Let's uh, turn now to a hymn that we probably haven't sung for quite a long time. It's number 540, and we're going to run through this. Uh, 540 in the Red Book, and Deb's going to play. She's going to give us a four major introduction, aren't you, Deb? And then we're going to sing, we'll sing the whole thing so we get a feel for this. And that's going to be our sending song today as well. Okay, it's Go Make Disciples, number 540. sing that again toward the end of our service. All right. We turn to our confession. Let us stand as we worship our God. We 
gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your way and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the gospel of our God. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, I declare to you, the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. We sing our opening hymn 636 in the Red Book if you'd like the music. How small our span of life. 636. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Generous God, 
Your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the readings. Our first reading this morning is from Numbers, chapters 11, verses 4 through 6, then verse 10 through 16, then 24 through 29. This is on page 120 in your Old Testament, on your pew Bibles. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again, and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a sucking child, to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once if I found faith, if I found favor in your sight. And do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Our psalm we will read responsibly should be up on the screen for you. You you can read the uh, bold. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eye. The fear of the Lord is clean and it endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. 
Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Your second reading is from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, which in your pew Bibles is on page 204 in your New Testament. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Let us stand for the acclamation. the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We begin at the 38th verse. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And I invite the children to come up for children's time. Come on up. Come on up. Good morning. Good to see you today. All right. Yeah, come on over. 
So, yeah, got a few more coming up, and that's great. There's room here. All right. Good morning, boys and girls. So, um, do any of you sing in the choir, a choir? No? How, how about in Sunday school? Do you sing in Sunday school? Okay. Um, do, you like, do you like singing? you like to sing? Yeah, a lot of us do. What do you like most about singing together? What do you like most? Yeah. Great. Yeah, the way it's... The way it sounds when everybody's singing together, yeah? Oh, nice. When you have your brothers and sisters with you, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. And when we sing together in church, it's a cool thing, isn't it? It's wonderful. We lift our praises to, to God. Now, what would happen, do you think, if a choir had, like, three different parts and one... One part of the choir saying, let's say, uh, uh, Jesus loves me, okay? And another sings, uh, happy birthday. Another sings, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How do you think that would sound? <laughs> no, we don't know, because I don't think we've heard that, have we? <laughs> but, but that would be pretty confusing, I think, wouldn't it? That would, that would sound pretty silly if we had all three going together. But let's try it just for fun here. I'm going to play a song and it's called So Sang the River and then we'll sing Jesus Loves Me. Okay? Let's try it. Now we'll see what it sounds like here. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know For the Bible tells me so Portal wants to him belong they are weak, but he is strong. What do you think? That was pretty silly, wasn't it? Huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, too much at once. I got messed up, too. So I was trying to listen to that and sing with you. Two different songs. So, yeah, it doesn't work very good. So we want to sing together when we're in a choir. Sometimes there's different parts, but they... They complement each other. Now, how many of you, how many, yeah, how many of you pray? You ever pray to God? Raise your hand if you ever pray. Okay. Yeah. Lots of us pray to God, don't we? And we pray to God here in worship. Here's, what I want you to think about with me, though, is praying with God. Now, praying with God can be different than sin. Yeah at the same time, kind of like in the choir, trying to get together and be uh, singing in a way that's harmonious, okay? If we pray to God, often we're just asking God to do things for us, okay? God, give me this, and we ask God for this and for this. If we pray with God, that's different. Then we're going to try to listen to God and have God help us to direct our prayers for what God wants for us and for others. For, for God to show us what God wants us to do as we live with others, as we're singing in the choir, so to speak, with others. If we listen with God, if we pray with God, that can change the way we pray. As an example, you might want to pray for, to God for a four-wheeler. Would that be kind of fun to have, a four-wheeler? Okay, some of the adults here would like a four-wheeler, too. Or a Harley-Davidson motorcycle, you know, if you're an adult. That'd be your dad? Okay. We won't say that too loud now, will we? But, okay. Yeah, we, we, we might pray to God, but if we're praying with God, God might say, you know, I'd rather that you run and play so that your body gets stronger instead of you having a four-wheeler or a motor scooter. Yeah, yeah. Or let's say that you ask, you pray to God, Lord, I, please get rid of that bully from school. Just, would they disappear? Nobody likes bullies. But maybe God wants you to try to be a friend to the bully instead. Okay? Maybe that's possible. Huh? Right. That's good. We don't want to be bullies. No, that's not a good thing. 
God, God, so if we can pray with God, it says in the Bible here, what we just read, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Now, what is a righteous person? What does righteous mean? Righteous, um, a righteous person is somebody that wants to listen to God and listen to Jesus and try to do what Jesus wants us to do. So when we pray, think of it. Yeah, right, okay. And then that, right, and if we're talking all the time to God, sometimes we're not listening, right? So we want to listen to God too. And one of the ways we do that is coming here into worship, like today, to listen to God's word and to pray with God. Okay? So prayer is a, is a good thing and it's a powerful thing. And as we pray with God, we, it's especially beautiful and great things can happen. So think of the choir again. Okay? Singing together can create a beautiful thing. And when we pray with God, beautiful things can happen as we listen to God and respond. Okay? Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for the gift of your word. Help us to listen to it. Help us to respond to it. Help us and teach us to pray that we might do your will and that beautiful things will happen as a result. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, children. You can head back. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today I'd like to talk about two different things. First of all, um, stumbling blocks. Jesus talked in our gospel about stumbling blocks. And first, what I want to do is uh, think with you about um, what you see other churches exhibiting. What is it that those other churches do that may drive you a little crazy? Um, think about that a minute. For me, one of those things in the past, I haven't had this happen recently so much, but would be if someone asked me, are you born again? And uh, that used to bother me. Not that it happened every day, but it happened a few times. And sometimes, years or decades ago, I, I wasn't quite sure how to respond to that. But today, I would, I would say, yes, I was born again when I was baptized into Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. And he is with me and he continues to guide me. He keeps giving life. How many of you are familiar with Jehovah's Witnesses? Okay, some of you, yeah, yeah. So, Jehovah's Witnesses are, uh, go door to door frequently uh, to uh, share their, their, their church teachings and their perspective on uh, the Bible. And um, I admire them for what, for their zeal, for what they, uh, you know, go out there and commit themselves to. Um, but it, uh, it bugs me what they believe, some of the things they believe. And I'll be forthright about that. For instance, um, that they believe, as I understand it, that 144,000 people will be saved based on a part of Revelation that I believe is misinterpreted, okay? So, what I'd like to ask them is, when they're going door to door, is aren't you kind of working against the odds by trying to recruit more people? Uh, only 144,000 are going to be saved. 
It seems a little odd to me. Jesus' disciples, someone said that we might call them the disciples at times because they're kind of, don't get it. They don't often catch on to what Jesus is, is teaching them or getting at. Um, they come to him, as we read in our gospel passage, upset because someone is casting out demons in Jesus' name. And they try to stop him because he was not following us. He was not following us. Stumbling blocks. Other churches, other Christians may put stumbling blocks up that cause others to stumble. And Jesus says this is a grave matter. On a, on a closer note to us and closer to home, how might we put up stumbling blocks that cause others to stumble, that cause others to trip up? Here's what I think. I think we all put up stumbling blocks sometime or other. And we are all stumbling blocks in one way or another. We're all stumbling blocks in some way. If you're willing to evaluate your own life, try to think of some of the ways you have been or are now a stumbling block to others believing or following Christ. Now Jesus, uh, well, okay, I'm going to mention myself. Uh, <laughs> I think I can be a stumbling block at times by being judgmental. Sometimes I can be overly judgmental. Uh, and, and that can be, I think, a stumbling block for others, perhaps. Jesus uses very violent imagery today in our gospel, and it's shocking. You know, it is shocking. He says, it's better to you if you cause others to stumble, it'd be better if you had a a millstone tied around your neck and you're thrown into the sea. These are shocking statements that we, we tremble at. Um, and uh, maybe they're intended to shock us to think about our lives. Jesus is uh, compassionate and loving to people. At the same time, he often warns that our actions can have dire consequences. Um, our hands and our feet and our eyes are important to all of us, aren't they? None of us want to give up an eye or a hand, but Jesus said it's better to cut one off or to pluck out your eye than to cause yourself or others to stumble. So he warns us um, because the stumbling block we put up may irreparably harm another Christian or a fellowship group. So we need to be vigilant so that we are at least aware as we can be about this. May God help us. May God have mercy on us all. Um, may, may God show us the way. Now one stumbling block for, I think, Christians people of other faith traditions probably too, but is how do we treat those who are different from us, whether they be Jehovah Witness or people of another race or creed or language group? How do we, how do we look upon them? How do we treat them? And that says a lot about our faith in God, how we treat others probably the most visible way um, that we can be uh, judged by other people, including other Christians. Um, I know that Catholics and Lutherans, let's use a simple example. Some of you maybe grew up Catholic, became Lutheran. Others, we know there are Lutherans that grew up Lutheran and become Catholics. Okay. Um, in years past, I think many of us are aware, there were some real clashes and real distrust and misunderstanding and even animosity between Catholics and Lutherans. Um, some of that goes way back to the Reformation when 
um, what are called anathemas, were hurled by Luther and his followers, you know, Lutherans at the Pope and Catholics for some of the practices and vice versa. We know there's a long history there. Thankfully, things have warmed up considerably between our, our groups over the last few decades as there have been ecumenical dialogues and efforts to try to bridge and understand what we share in common, which is much, so much, we share in common. We recognize our Catholic brothers and sisters as Christian people. We hope they also recognize us as God's people as well. And I think they do, most, most all of them. I have priests that are good friends. And the best man at my wedding, our wedding, was Dave, who in college, he's an evangelical Catholic, strong social conscience. Dave um, and I became good friends. And one of the reasons I'm a pastor today is because of Dave. Dave uh, encouraged, inspired, challenged me and others uh, in our walk with God. And I learned a whole lot from him. I was best man at his wedding. He was best man at my wedding. We became great friends. Um, I think there's an example, and I'm sure some of you have friendships with people from other denominations, whether Catholic or Pentecostal or, or what have you. And how can we learn from each other? How can we see the good in one another? Jesus told his disciples, whoever is not against us is for us. Maybe we are also too quick to dismiss those who are of other faiths. We don't have to agree with everything another faith tradition teaches. However, how do we love people from another faith tradition and not dismiss them such that they would dismiss us? Um, I think of Mormons. Somebody brought up Mormons the other day. And, you know, um, Mormons, I don't agree with some of the teachings of the Mormon church. Um, in fact, I very strongly disagree with some of them that I've learned about. But does that mean that there aren't Mormons that do a lot of good in the world and who follow Jesus? I think there are. And that's just an example. Even while we don't necessarily agree with everything they would teach, can we see the good that they do? and then try to understand more. A few years ago, Pastor B Brian McLaren, well-known pastor, was um, reflecting on um, the anniversary of September 11th, and he wrote the following. To love your neighbor of another faith means to seek to understand her, to learn to see the world from her perspective, to stand with her as it were, so that you can feel what she feels and maybe even come to understand why she loves what she loves. To try to understand why she loves what she loves or why he loves what he loves. I lived among Muslims for five years and I had to try to understand what they believe, how they practice their faith, their religion. Um, I learned a lot. I had Muslims try to get me to become a Muslim. They tried to convert me, so to speak. I shared my faith with some of them, my faith in Jesus and why I was a follower of Jesus. Um, I respect Muslims, including the fact they pray five times a day. That's pretty remarkable. Think about it. What is it about Muslim religion, Islam, that we might admire? Um, I think trying to understand is a first step toward loving our Muslim neighbors. And I'd love to have them try to understand my faith and my trust in God and Christ. So I've covered a few examples, I think. You may have others. What are you thinking? What are your thoughts about these things? How, how might you and I be a stumbling block 
to others? I think that's a fair, sobering question we need to ask, and I need to ask, and you do. How can you and I be salt and light in this world as God's people? And as, as for other religions or other Christian denominations, and even those people who don't believe, I would ask you again to ponder what all this may mean. Um, even as we profess that Jesus is the Savior of the world, the way, the truth, and the life, how do we respond to others? We might ask, we might ask, what would Jesus do? Or, what did Jesus do? Amen. Let us sing our hymn. In response to the gospel of God's grace, let us uh, respond with uh, our confession of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Let us stand as we confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue to thank you for your offerings to our church and want you to be reminded that there are the plates in the back of the church. As you leave today, you may leave your offering in the plates. Um, and we continue with our Create in Me, our offertory. Let us bring our petitions before God at this time. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and for all people. Let us pray for the whole church on earth and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized, O God. Strengthen those who are languishing Make fruitful, newly planted churches. Bless all who are working for justice and peace in the world. Sustain us and all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the natural wonders of creation. The Palm de Terre Lake and River Valley and all its creatures, farms, fields, orchards, and forests in Stevens County and throughout our great state and country. Strengthen us to live wisely with all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those in authority, including President Biden and the Congress, Governor Waltz and the Minnesota Legislature. Give them wise minds, courage to lead, and compassionate hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick, for those struggling with COVID, cancer, dementia, or any other disease. We remember Mick Rose, Jean Recibi, Marvel Anderson, Myron Severson, and others we name in silence or out loud. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our worship leaders and worship leaders everywhere, musicians and readers, acolytes and ushers, Bless them and bless us through their ministry and grant them passion to continue to do service in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our confirmation youth who will affirm their baptism into Christ on October 17th. Scott Anderson, Sarah Doherty, Charlie Erdahl, Jackson Hillbrands, Isaac Just, Ellen Reed, and Micah Ulrich. Fill them with your spirit, O God. Bless them with wisdom and courage and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks for all the saints, including those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their examples and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign of the peace with our neighbors. Thank you for your presence in worship today as we um, support one another as believers in Christ. And um, reminder again that next week we are at Carol Johnson's out in the country and um, we will try to get you the directions again to get there. Uh, we hope to have a great turnout and a great celebration of God's faithfulness and the fruitfulness of creation. Um, and so now let us receive the benediction the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our sending hymn, Go Make Disciples. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. God.